Hi everyone, welcome to another Journalist Toolbox training. My name is Mike Riley, the founder and editor of the Journalist Toolbox. Um, today we're going to work with business tools, uh, starting our three-part series on resources for covering uh, business. Um, in part one, we're going to work with Google Finance tools. But before we get started, I just wanted to mention the Journalist Toolbox, journalisttoolbox.org, uh, which is a website that's presented by the Society of Professional Journalists. Uh, if you go to this uh, website, uh, you will find hundreds of resources uh, helpful to journalists, uh, everything from transcription tools to data journalism tools, uh, you know, digital security, ethics, uh, copy editing, public records, which is a very popular uh, section of the site. You can click on any of these tabs and it'll open up uh, a sub-level folder. Uh, and this one is our business resources, which you might be interested in watching this video. And you can scroll through here and pick out whatever topic uh, that you want to dig into. And uh, a good place to go might be investigating companies. We're going to work with some of these tools in our second training video. Um, and uh, you can scroll through here, and these are uh, resources, links to tools that will help you uh, dig into backgrounding a uh, private company uh, or a uh, publicly traded company, startups, things like that. Very hard to find information on uh, private companies and, and startups, but we have a lot of resources here that will help you do that. Um, so uh, take advantage of Journalist Toolbox. We also have uh, linked off the right rail here, um, training videos. We have more than 60 training videos of which you're watching one right now on our YouTube channel. Uh, we also have a newsletter uh, that comes out every two weeks. Uh, feel free to uh, subscribe to it. It's free. It's a sub stack. Um, and it has uh, every other Tuesday morning, you'll get a little uh, uh, email that has all kinds of little tools and tips and tricks in it. Uh, the latest and greatest tools that are available on the web. So that's the journalist toolbox. Um, our first part of our business coverage tools uh, is on this handout. So if you want to uh, pause for a second, uh, pause the video, and you can open up this bit.ly link. It's bit.ly slash Google Finance Tools. Um, you also can pause this video and go into the description for the video uh, in YouTube, uh, and you'll find this link in here, and you can just click on it and open up this exercise. So take a quick minute and open up this exercise sheet. All right, welcome back, everybody. Um, at the very top here, I've just got a, a few uh, uh, links uh, to Journal's Toolbox resources that I just talked about up here. Um, you know, again, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to our uh, Toolbox newsletter. Um, part one of our uh, tra three-part training is going to focus on a tool called Google Finance. Google Finance, google.com slash finance, or finance.google.com will get you there. Uh, track stock prices in real time. Uh, so you can go up here and you can type in a uh, stock. Uh, you know, you can do the abbreviation or you can type in just the name of the company. Uh, if I'm looking for Amazon, I can open it up and look at its NASDAQ price. It can, uh, you can adjust this to be the Dow or S&P or you know, any of them that you want to look at. Uh, and you can see how that stock is trading. Pretty basic stuff. But you can do more with it. You can create what's called a watch list. Over here on the right, it has a new list that you can add here by hitting the plus sign. You can see I've got a couple of them over here. Uh, Andrew's Kitty Stocks is my 14-year-old nephew. Uh, my wife and I uh, buy stocks for him ever since he was a baby. Uh, and we put them uh, in here so I can kind of track him and see how he's doing. You know, his American Airlines is down a little bit. Uh, his Disney stock is down. You know, we buy stuff that, you know, uh, had uh, McDonald's, among many others, in here in the past. The nice thing about this, too, is it gives an earnings calendar over here. It tells you when the next quarterly or annual earnings meeting uh, and when the annual report comes out uh, over in this area. So it's a really good way if you're tracking stocks in a certain industry uh, to see when those earnings reports are coming up and you can add those to your Google Calendar so you make sure that you're on those calls and can listen in. We also have a thing up here that says new lists. So I can go through and create one either for an industry or you know uh, just your own personal use uh, as well. Um, so, you know, we we'll go through here and I'll make up one called Mike Stocks. And right up here, you can add your investments and go through and select the symbol or, you know, uh, uh, whatever you want to add. Um, and you can keep adding to it. What it'll do in here is drop in, since I selected Tesla, it'll drop in a bunch of Tesla news information right under here. Tesla will sit up here uh, in, in my uh, stock 
uh, uh, list up here and you can see my my price uh, and the percentage increase so far during that day um, so I'll add a few more in here just so you can get a feel for uh, what it looks like we'll go F for Ford it's an easy one and uh, I've had some Verizon in the past um, and I'm doing too well today um, and we can throw in some Disney as well and then you can get this nice little quick snapshot of your stocks you know so if you're coming to a certain industry you know this is a good thing uh, to build out you can uh, add several of them up here to your uh, watch window uh, and skip around among them and, and get a quick look at them so that you know over here on the uh, right hand side again it'll list all of your um, uh, stocks and, and uh, upcoming earnings reports on the home page of Google uh, uh, Finance uh, you can see all of the upcoming ones Adobe's got a uh, uh, earnings meeting coming up soon Accenture among others you can hop in and add these to your calendar as well um, it always has a most followed list on here you know these are you know uh, popular you know, Facebook obviously Amazon Apple and others um, it uh, shows up at the top uh, you know how the different markets are doing I'm on US right now but you hit uh, skip over to uh, Europe Asia uh, crypto is now listed here as well um, which is quite interesting um, so you can uh, track all your markets in one place but you can do more with this than just what I'm showing you on the interface you actually can scrape data out of here and store it in a spreadsheet okay and to do that you have to have these things uh, called attributes okay attributes are little abbreviations Google uses to uh, highlight uh, the different areas on the uh, stock ticker um, things like PE is price earnings ratio uh, high 52 is a 52 week high price uh, low 52 is a 52 week low price you know price is self-explanatory the real-time stock quote price uh, it can be delayed up to 20 minutes it says on here but I'll tell you it's pretty darn current um, it's pretty uh, pretty easy uh, uh, to see that it, it comes through uh, the data comes through quickly then you can write these little scripts like this uh, that you can plug into a spreadsheet and it will continually scrape uh, that stock data and place it into a spreadsheet in real time okay so in your handout I've got a list here very uh, first one underneath the Google Finance tool that's your quick list of the scraping formulas uh, that I have listed right here that lists all of the different categories okay just good to know okay underneath it it has this practice spreadsheet that you can make a copy of so hit the pause button and open up this Google sheet I also have a training video here from the USA Today training network I've done a training for them on this uh, that you can watch this video as well but hit our uh, practice spreadsheet and it will take you to this spreadsheet so just pause the video for a second and then we'll get started on what's in this spreadsheet all right welcome back um, so if you've opened this spreadsheet up uh, the first thing I need you to do is to make a copy of it okay you don't want to type and work on this spreadsheet since it's the master so go to file and make a copy right here and just where it says copy of you know just put your name in there I'll put the date on mine as well you just click OK and this spreadsheet has two tabs at the bottom it has this main sheet that I've got here where we're gonna uh, pull some data from a Google Finance on prices price earnings ratio uh, in the 52 week high price for Google Verizon Nike and Ford so we'll write little scripts that'll drop that data in there and continually update as they change as the stock market changes we also have a little tab down here at the bottom called single stock focus Okay, single stock focus we're going to scrape a lot of data vertically here for Google and for Apple you know and you can add any of them here you want okay everything off of these two spreadsheets works off this symbol column so anything in these symbol columns whatever the abbreviation is whether it be you know uh, Disney uh, Ford you know uh, Amazon uh, you know Google whatever uh, as long as that stock abbreviation is in this symbols column we can tell it to go to that column pull that stock and then whatever data we want to match up with it it's kind of like playing battleship 
I'm going to tell it to go to cell A2 and pull the data, the price from B1 for Google and drop it into this thing. You know, boom, you sunk my battleship. Now that's the premise of a spreadsheet, and especially when you're scraping, just to think A2 is what I want to scrape Google and I want its earning price and drop it into B2. So I've written some scripts for you that you can take and just drop in so you can kind of see how the sausage is made. So if you go to step one here, how to pull stock data into a spreadsheet. And it shows you, you know, how to set these uh, four things up that I've already set up in the spreadsheet for you. And it tells you in cell B2, you're going to type equal sign Google Finance and then in parentheses A2 and B1. What it tells it to do is to go into A2 and pull Google's B1 stock price and drop it in here. So you just paste that formula in. And sometimes it'll say error. It's not really a, an error. Um, it'll uh, load in for you. You just have to be patient. Over here where it says price earnings ratio, I'm going to go back to my exercise, grab Google Finance a to C1, so we're going to grab Google's price earnings ratio, drop it right in here, and then we're going to do the high 52, which is the third one. That's A2 D1. Okay, so now for row two, it's going to be a little different. I'm going to write the formula. So I'm going to type in equal sign Google Finance. You always have to have Google Finance in front of it for it to work. So it knows to pull from Google Finance. It's telling the spreadsheet, go to Google Finance and find A3, which is Verizon. And I want B1, Verizon's price, right in here. And in real time, it'll continue updating all this data. So you can only have to set this up one time. You know, if you're tracking, uh, uh, make sure you spell it right too. It gives you more uh, formulas under here. You can click on this and, and pull up more formulas, but I'm just gonna write my own here. A2, A3, comma, C1. And then move it across. Now we'll do Google Finance. A3, D1, close parentheses, hit return. And you can do this for the others. You know, it's a, a little tedious, but you know, you only have to set it up one time because it'll uh, uh, continue to add to it. Now you could add other categories in here to E, F, G, H up at the top in the first row. Uh, all you have to do is go into this page, which I've given you and pull any of these other attributes. So if I wanted, you know, the, the beta value, I could go in and pull that out. I just have to add a beta column, okay? That's all I have to do. So that's how you set up uh, just a basic sheet to, to follow a handful of stocks, okay? Now let's say I wanted to dig a little deeper. I wanted to look at Google's uh, 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 daily and weekly closing prices for a period of time, either the last month or the last year. I can do that by going back into my exercise sheet and going into step two here, how to scrape historical stock prices. I can go over to column D and I can put in this formula. And what it tells it to do is to go to Google Finance. I'm gonna scrape A3, which is Google. I'm gonna ask for its price, it'll be the closing price from 1209-2020, it's a little over a year ago, I'm doing this on the 10th of 2021, uh, December 10th, 2021, and get all of those stock prices from December of 2020 to today. Daily stock prices, so it'll be you know, 365 days in here, 364, um, uh, not counting the weekends, of course, but uh, here's the stock prices. So I'll paste that formula into column I will do it column F. It's got the closing price for each day. You know, and this goes on and on and on because it's every single day. And this will update, you know, once I hit the 10th, 11th, 12th, and so on. 
You also can do it for weekly, if you want the weekly closing price. It's a little shorter. So 1209.2020 to today. And I, instead of daily, I'll put weekly at the end. And give me everything from December 2020 or December 9th, I should say. I'll paste that into column I. And of course, I can adjust this up here and say, you know, December or whatever. If I want to copy this data then, you know, if I just want to grab this chunk of data and, and uh, you know, move it somewhere else where I want to sort and filter it, very easy to do. Just click in the upper left-hand corner, this little rectangle between A and 1, copy it, and then hit the plus sign down in the lower left. It says Add Sheet. And instead of pasting it in, go to Edit, Paste special, paste values only. What that'll do is paste just the data you selected uh, and it won't bring through the scraping formulas so it won't be updating and you can actually edit this data. The original scrape data you can't edit uh, because it's constantly scraping so it'll, uh, it'll mess things up. The data will disappear the minute you try to edit it. That's why you always have to make a copy. So paste special, paste values only. And your data will paste in. Now it's raw. I can sort this if I wanted to find, you know, uh, the highest closing price per week. You know, I could sort uh, by column J here and find it pretty easily. Okay. So just a little tip there. Let's now click on this tab at the bottom that says single stock focus. This allows us to scrape vertically a variety of categories instead of laying it out horizontally. I actually prefer this vertical method. I think it reads a little better. We're going to do two of them, Apple and Google. We just do them a little bit differently. The formulas are a little uh, different than the ones we've just written. To do that, go to step three, which is right here. And copy this one, equal sign, Google Finance. You put in the stock ticker symbol right here, Goog. And we want column A2. What it's doing is it's going to ref refer back to A2 here, okay, A2 is Google, single stock focus. It's gonna pull the name, so the name's an A2. I'm gonna paste it in. It's just gonna give me Alphabet Inc. You know, ignore the loading error, it happens sometimes. And now I can pull, uh, a little different than the other ones we did, uh, you can actually grab the little right-hand corner, that little, uh, uh, bar and drag it down and it will auto scrape all the other categories for Google it'll give me the price the low the high and so on and it will continually update these as they change throughout the days weeks months and so on we'll do the same thing for Apple we'll go back to the exercise okay we've got the stock price and now we're gonna go a2 we're just gonna give it its name Apple. I'm going to drag this down, release, and now we have all the Apple stock. Okay, so you could do this for any number of uh, you know industry or uh, companies within the industry you're covering, uh, and boom, you have this quick live snapshot of it uh, that you can then easily make a copy of and sort and filter and, and you know analyze as you see fit. Um, so take advantage of Google Finance. You know, spend some time with this handout, going through part one. Uh, learning how to work with all of these formulas. I've given you some blank formulas down here you can work with um, and, and get uh, uh, up to speed on how to, one, use Google Finance and just set up the interface, but also how to scrape it because this is a really good feature if you're uh, covering uh, a certain industry. It, it is a huge shortcut for you. So hopefully this uh, video helps you. Uh, we do have a second and third installment uh, of the video. It's going to also work off of this handout. Uh, right underneath our Google Finance, part two is proxies and background in companies and charities. So we'll be up uh, uh, with our next video next month on proxies and background in companies and charities.